If they're not somebody who's attractive, they'll love the person that makes them feel attractive. If they're somebody who's not confident in their sexual skills, they'll attach to the person who makes them feel like they are. They're coming from a place of egoism. And as a result, when that person stops feeding that egoism, their low self-esteem is not enough to keep them happy. So they lash out. So it's very difficult to form any kind of long-lasting relationship. And I've learned this the hard way myself without self-esteem because you accept the unacceptable and you seek sometimes the unacceptable and you can't maintain relationships because you don't have the source of self-love to maintain it. Yeah. I, I feel like it's also where the power struggles kick in yeah. because then you, you start seeing relationships in terms of conditions of like, yeah. what are you doing for me? Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I'm here because you were making me feel this way, yeah. but now you stop making me feel this way. So I'm going to do this thing to hurt you yeah. so that you, you do the thing to make me feel good again. And you get this tit for tat going and it just spirals out of control. But one thing I'm even interested in doing with myself, I always wonder, how do you know that you've reached a relationship with high self-esteem? How do you know that it's actually high self-esteem? And I only realized that even myself when I felt like I completely love my partner, but I have a willingness to walk away if the if things were, if I was very extremely disrespected or things were wrong. I think maybe previously I would have just clung on for dear life yeah. uh, or left very easily regardless. So there's a willingness to fight, but there's also a willingness to leave if need be. And it's fine that balance. I think I used to tip over too much on the willingness to walk away or tip off on too much on the willingness to stay regardless of treatment. And only when you have that balance that I feel, you never know, but I feel more confident. But I don't know the exact measure of how you know your self-esteem is right. My intuition is going towards, it, it's one of those like, if you have to ask, then it's probably not there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think about really insecure relationships that I was in in the past. There was kind of this constant questioning of, our status, mm -hmm. are we good, is she happy, yeah. am I happy, is she getting what she wants, am I getting, like. There's a curiosity. You're constantly wondering and stressing over all mm -hmm. these kind of existential questions within the relationship. And I just know like within my wife, it, it's there's like peace. There's yeah. just, the questions don't even come up mm -hmm. because there's no need to ask them. Yeah. It's just things are good. Mm -hmm. I think that's another aspect that an optimal relationship is actually when nothing needs to be optimized. Yeah. Like it's just, there's no questions even arise because both people are just comfortable and happy. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Finding the perfect therapist is a huge win for your mental health, but let's face it, it's not always easy or simple. That's where BetterHelp can come in. With BetterHelp, starting your therapy journey is accessible and flexible as ever. Whether you prefer texting, a phone call, or a face-to-face -face video session, BetterHelp has you covered. And if you ever feel like your therapist isn't quite right for you, switching is as simple as clicking a button. I'm a testament to the wonders of therapy. It was crucial for my personal development and well-being. It helped me deal with a lot of my social anxieties and gave me tools to deal with all the shit that life inevitably throws at all of us. Honestly, without it, I doubt I'd be here sharing this with you. So if you're feeling bogged down, lost, and don't know where to turn, give BetterHelp a try. I've also got a special treat. If you head to betterhelp.com slash IDGAF or use the promo code IDGAF, it stands for I don't give a fuck. At checkout, you'll get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. So get your shit together. Sign up for BetterHelp. I'm sorry to ask, but how do we know then there's a difference between that there's peace or there's denial? <laughs> yeah, because uh, sometimes uh, some men will come to That's me and we say, question. we have a great relationship. <laughs> some men will be like thrown off guard. They're like, mm. we had a great relationship. Mm. Our sex life was great. There was nothing wrong. And I found out she was having an affair the whole time. Yeah. So how do, but what I'm guessing is there was some element of denial to keep the peace. So I would say that the peace, uh, as you described, definitely a relationship that required the peace, but the peace is not achieved by you suppressing what your actual thoughts and desires are. The peace is, is achieved because there's a synchrony in what you both desire. Yeah. Mm. Well, and is the is the peace achieved through this is bumping up against boundaries, which yeah. you know that you're both real um, big on. Yeah. It like Mark, if you want to get to that point in your relationship where you are at that level of peace, I think you have to get there through a series of boundaries and enforcing yeah. them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you've talked before, Saudi, about boundaries and that they're kind of the instructions for te or teaching people how to love you. Yeah. Um, can you talk more about that, I guess? Yeah, the thing is, I uh, and I've been guilty of this myself, people feel like they have a strength to them if they can just cut people off instantly. And they're like, you broke my boundaries, I cut them off. And they feel so strong about that. But that's actually a signal of weakness. The real strength of boundaries comes with your willingness to teach people how to truly love you, not play mind games. So what I mean by this is if you're somebody who doesn't appreciate your partner leaving you for weeks on end to go travel, you simply, it's not that you hold them by the throat and say, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. It's 
more just a case of I like us to be more connected. So this is what I value in a relationship. If you would, if that's something that you're compatible with or you can work towards, perfect. If not, then I wish you the best, but it's not necessarily ideal for our relationship. But you're working towards a compromise rather than just cutting people off immediately. Boundaries, I always say, is a bit like when you're ordering in a menu, um, a, a restaurant. If they ask you what are your allergies, you have to tell them. You have to tell them what your allergies are. And if they don't have anything that caters to you, you don't scream at the waitress. You simply go to another restaurant. Where people get it wrong is that they think this is my boundaries. You have to listen to me. I don't want you going out. I don't want you to do this. But they keep enforcing them, getting more and more toxic instead of thinking, well, if this person doesn't want to change, I should just leave. The boundaries, the end goal is with me, not with the person changing. So it's a very tricky one, but it's one that if you can just set them early, you'll filter out the wrong people anyway. And throughout the relationship, you'll be in line with each other's boundaries. Yeah. Mm. I'm still thinking about that question about the guy who thought everything was great. Naive, yeah, the but, denial rather than peace. Yeah, my, my first relationship was like that. I was completely oblivious. Yeah, but, I but think, in your mind, was it peaceful, the relationship? So here's the funny thing. Yeah. It was not peaceful. Right. She and I fought all the time. Right. But in my head, that was normal. Right. That, that was okay. That mm -hmm. That's just what relationships do. Mm -hmm. And so it never occurred to me that, so I think part of it is just a poor definition of like what a good relationship is. Mm -hmm. So you can, if, if you, you can be, sitting in a pool of shit but like if if your understanding of relationships is that they're all pools of shit then you're like this is fine, it's fine yeah yeah uh, whereas i also think too that you know it, some of it comes down to communication i could see there being a case where it's like maybe he was happy maybe maybe the relationship had been kind of she had been catering to him yeah. for, for a long time and so in his head he's like this is great mm -hmm. the re relationship's great i'm happy she's yeah. happy and Either she didn't communicate that she was unhappy to him, mm. which then it's a communication breakdown, or she tried to communicate to him, but he just shut it down and wouldn't yeah. listen or didn't respect what she was saying. Mm. What's coming up to me as I think about this is that there is a process within the relationship of, I guess, constructive critical conversations. Yeah. Uh, Peace is not achieved through suppressing what you actually need to you, talk about. You earn it through difficult conversations, yeah. Yeah. through uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that my wife and I, we were always good at it together, but I think we've gotten excellent at mm -hmm. it over the years is is having those difficult conversations mm -hmm. and remaining non-judgmental -judge and not taking things too Did personal. you ever have fiery fights with this particular, with, the, with your wife or not so much? Is she just oh, got yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. She's had, got that she's nature. Brazilian. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's Brazilian. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I, I have a fiery nature as well. Yeah, yeah. We, so, I, I never wonder what she's feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so because then I always sometimes wonder am I like because I don't my, my partner would definitely need to say that it's not easy being with somebody who is so opinionated and so open. so I don't know like I don't know if he would describe me as a peaceful person but he knows how to create peace in our relationship well the funny thing is is that you're you adapt to each other yeah right so when when I first started dating my wife she was extremely fiery and emotional yeah. and very expressive and and it was sometimes it was a lot sometimes yeah. i was like oh my god there's <laughs> this is i would feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. 